Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and another historic event. Today's deck is Simic Surprise. Welcome back to It Resolves, everybody, here on the channel. We love to play new decks, have some fun, and hopefully learn a little something along the way. We are going to be testing out Simic Surprise today, otherwise known as Simic Flash. Now, there's a little bit of variance in how these decks can be set up. Some of them have a little bit more card draw, a little bit lower ground card draw. Some of them have uh, a little bit more in the way of counters, things like that. Um, we have sort of a middle ground solution here with just a little bit of both, uh, and, and we're going to talk through it, and then hopefully jump into a really really fun event now this deck has been around for quite some time um if you've never played it or maybe played against it basically the idea is that you're going to be playing lands and passing the turn every single time uh the idea being that on your opponent's turn you're able to play essentially everything in your deck so we've either got instant speed spells or flash creatures uh between night pack ambusher frilled mystic and then brazen borrower so those are really going to be the way that we are looking to finish the game in particular the night pack ambusher if we can get this down and then protect it with a lot of counter magic things like that uh that will most likely end the game in right around three turns is the goal uh, now, Frilled Mystic on its own can counter a spell as it comes down, which is awesome. Uh, and then, of course, Brazen Borrower has that Petty Theft Adventure instant on the left side there that allows us to bounce a permanent on the opponent's uh, field. It doesn't matter what that permanent might be. It could be anything. As long as it's a permanent, we can bounce it and hopefully get some value. Uh, now, in the way of interaction and counter magic, we do have things like Fading Hope as a two of here. We've got Jwari Disruption as a full four. Uh, sometimes you get really lucky and these hit something really early and it can be devastating to the opponent. Uh, other times you find yourself just running it out as a land because the game goes a little longer than you expect. We are not necessarily hoping that the game goes long, we do have a game plan for it, but we have a lot of these soft counters because as long as we can kind of counter a lot of the important stuff in the uh, in the early turns of the game, on turn 3 and 4 we should be able to start taking over with some of our creatures. Uh, Quench is here as well, again another soft counter as a 3 of this time, it can't be a modal land so we figured let's trim it down to 3. Uh, two cards, or two decisive denial here. Uh, this gives us a little bit of a removal. It's a soft removal, but it is a removal option, allowing us to fight our opponent's creatures with some of our own. Uh, if we get a night pack ambusher out or something along those lines, that really can help us out. Uh, again, it also counters a non-creature spell. Sweepers are some of the worst things that we have to deal with, uh, because once we get something down, if we don't have a way to counter a sweeper or a removal spell, we, we basically are going to be kind of dead in the water. So this really helps us there. Now, Grow Spiral uh, allows us to ramp, actually. So this gets us to Night Pack Ambusher in particular uh, a turn early if we can drop this down. It's also a great way to just benefit, draw a card, get a land on the field. It's sort of max value for two mana in a deck where you're already going to be leaving up uh, your mana almost every single turn, if not every single turn. Uh, now, again, we have that Brazen Borrower. Archmage's Charm is a great kind of all-around catch-all spell. You can choose one, counter a spell, draw two cards, or gain control of target non-land permanent with value one or less. Uh, most of the time, we're going to be countering a spell, but drawing two cards is always beneficial as well. Gaining control of stuff can be helpful just to disrupt like a Cauldron Familiar combo or something along those lines, but generally speaking, we won't be doing that. Uh, and then Rewind is one of the best counter spells for this deck because we actually get to untap four lands after we counter something. Normally paying four mana for a hard counter is a little expensive. We would expect maybe three, but not four. However, this allows us to untap lands and then follow up with another play, whether that be another Rewind. Uh, a night pack ambush or whatever it might be one of the best play patterns of this deck is to on turn three or four be able to rewind because maybe we grow spiraled earlier uh get something major off of the opponent's field as in disrupting it before it even hits and then get a night pack ambusher down with them tapped out because you know you're at least going to get a turn with it you're going to get an extra token out of the deal and you're going to you're going to pass the next turn with hopefully some more counters up uh, Memory Deluge, another really good option, <clears throat> and again, this helps us in the, the go-long kind of games. We can hit this, get a couple cards into our hand, and then use that flashback later on if we need to. 
Uh, we do have 25 lands in this deck. However, uh, a couple things I would note, we have the full four of Ottawara, which is a lot, but again, we're disrupting. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to tempo and disrupt. And so bouncing uh, either an artifact creature, enchantment, or planeswalker on the opponent's side is always good. We also have Lonely Sandbar, not a land we see very often, but a very good one allowing us to just cycle further into the deck. So all that being said, guys, this is a tried and true classic. I don't think it will be, it's not a tier one deck by any means. I don't think we're going to get like an undefeated run or anything, but I do think it'll be a fun one to actually jump into an event with and just test it out. We haven't played it for a while. I think it'll be a blast. I love this style deck. So we're going to hopefully learn a lot today. Let's do it. Let's jump into game one. Let's see how we do. Uh, and guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We do have our 10,000 sub giveaway going on right now. So I do encourage you, please make sure if you're not already, subscribe to the channel once we hit 10,000 we are going to be doing some awesome stuff so do check that out as well but let's do it guys let's jump into the event all right guys and here we are for game number one now this is a very interesting hand uh and in a weird way I kind of feel like we could keep it uh, we are going to have to make a lot of really interesting decisions with this deck as a general rule of thumb. It's just one of those decks where you will have a lot of, you know, do I counter this? Do I soft counter this? Expecting that they'll pay for it, but then they might get tapped out. There's a lot of that kind of stuff that we are going to have to keep in mind here. Uh, now, this hand is not necessarily well set up against this kind of uh, start, basically because we have a lot of these four drops here. However, uh, Brazen Borrower, not a bad draw, and we do get to leave up a Quench or Jwari Disruption here, which is quite nice. So we'll see what the opponent is up to this time around. Uh, and that is a spell worth countering. Dreadhorde Arcanist is one of the ways that they actually continue their game plan long term uh, by replaying stuff from the graveyard. So I'm all too happy to get that out of there now. Uh, just don't want them to commit more and more to the board. This is obviously terrible for us. Uh, so basically, we're just kind of hoping for the best at this point. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this down. Most likely going to end up Brazen Borrowing something uh, this turn. Uh, if I had to guess, it's probably whatever they, they target with that Reckless Charge, if that is their game plan. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, not a lot we can do about that. We could try and Jawari Disruption, but obviously that's not going to do anything. They just pay it. Uh, so we'll allow the, uh, the draw here. Nothing we can do. And uh, hopefully we can save ourselves a little bit this turn. We will see. Uh, okay. Interesting. Um, I actually don't know that we... I think we actually pass here. Uh, only because, so again, we do have a lot of decisions to make. Yeah, so we were not dead that turn, and so I think I would much rather wait, counter a spell, and then be able to kind of deal something there. Um, now, we have got some major choices. Ooh. I think for the sake of uh, having that rewind up, we actually take the, the two. This is so tricky. Uh, so we actually get a double counter here if we want it. We can rewind, untap our lands, and then we have Frilled Mystic, which, which can actually just block one of these as well. Uh, we also, of course, just have Brazen Borrower as an option. Got a lot of options here. Um, they are forcing us into, so I'm assuming they know we have the rewind. Um, think we just do this and uh, expect to block one let's see that's sorcery speed they just deal three yeah they got us fair enough not much we can do there uh, that was that was a bit of a rough start we didn't keep a great hand although I would suggest I don't know that we we have a couple of really interactive pieces that we could have used instead but in general Maybe just not a great start. Uh, that's okay though. Let's jump into game two. I think uh, I think that was kind of just a rough matchup to be honest. Let's see if we can do a little better. All right, guys. Let's see if we can do a little better this time. Uh, kind of an interesting hand, actually. I will try it. Uh, again, kind of heavy on the four drops, which is not what you want. Ideally, we'd have like a a low ground counter. Granted, we do have Decisive Denial, although it is non-creature spells, so just something to keep in mind there. Uh, but we can cycle this Lonely Sandbar, which I think might actually be the play. Uh, we'll see what the opponent is up to. It looks like a Gigantha deck here. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and cycle this, dig a little bit further, and just see what we hit. Um, again, we have 25 lands. I'm not overly concerned with the uh, 
the lands that we have. Um, so we basically have all the lands we need. Let's let's just do this and we'll see what happens. Again, decisive denial could come in handy here. We'll see. Uh, do we need to counter a play with fire? I don't think so. I don't think that's what we counter. Now that might be wrong. They did scry to the bottom, which is nice, um, but getting an early two damage doesn't seem that impactful. There's a growth spiral, okay. Uh, so I think here is a pretty easy breeding pool pass. Um, and again, this is the play pattern, right? We know we are gonna just be playing and passing most of the time, uh, which is totally fine. I kind of want to leave that decisive denial to make sure that we've got a way to fight off this Red Horde Arcanist. That seems pretty important. Um, but we will see. It looks like they are going to hit us with that play with fire. That's fine. Again, I'm just going to let that be. Uh, and they get a free hit for one. Okay. Uh, looks like it's going to be the same style deck that we were up against previously. Uh, with that in mind, I'm going to throw the Bark Channel pathway down and leave up the Ottawara. Uh, for various reasons, but let's go ahead and throw the U out now. Alright, uh, and I think we just passed. It looks like they are caught up on lands, which is pretty helpful. They also don't seem to have blue. Okay, now they do. Fair enough. Uh, we'll see what they've got. Uh, do we counter that? I think we do. I'm going to go ahead and counter this. It gives them one less creature to worry about, it, or gives us one less creature to worry about. It does give them a target for any just burn spell, uh, which is fine. Um, I'd rather kind of get these out of the way before the night pack ambusher gets down, because obviously that's a much more important spell. So, um, Okay, so we can do this. Uh, we actually have an interesting decision to make, so we can play this, fight this off, um, but I think we would much rather rewind first, so I think we pass. Um, that, again, decision making in this deck is just one of those things that you are going to have to constantly be um, kind of on top of, because it is so important that you get it right. Um, I don't know that we have at this point, but that's fine. <laughs> so we want them to attack first, we want them... Okay, let's do this. Uh, oh, we actually messed up there, so we actually skipped one phase too far, uh, but that worked out just fine. All right, we got the win. We beat the deck. We got the revenge. That was awesome. Uh, definitely a bit of a mistake on our end, but again, we, we were kind of going to start taking over, I think. Uh, we were in a position where we were able to, so that felt great. Let's go ahead and jump into game three. All right, guys, and here we are for game number three. Uh, this definitely seems like a keep. Um, I don't love a couple of things about it, but I'm, I think this is fine. Uh, we've got some early soft counters. We've also got the growth spiral, which is probably, again, one of the better cards to have in the opening turns. Soul Warden is going to be frustrating, no doubt about that. Uh, but we'll see what the opponent's up to this time. Uh, part of me does kind of want to lean on Quench more so than Jwari Disruption here. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna let that hit, uh, because I think that's the least of the worries. Do I care about the Lunark veteran? Um, I'm gonna say no. Uh, I think we want to save the counters for something big and take the growth spiral opportunity now, uh, if we can. So let's go ahead and do this. Perfect. That's absolutely perfect, actually. All right. Uh, let's go Ottawara. And we get to free pass here. See what the opponent's up to. Um, I think this is pretty reasonable. Again, oh, they are stuck on lands, too. Potentially. They, they could just be... No, they are stuck on lands. Okay. Uh, so they gain a life here, but we obviously get a much stronger start. I actually think the Jawari Disruption is something to hold on to right now. Uh, let's see if they decide they want to block. Uh, looks like no, which is perfect. Um, and now, I mean, without their lands, they are going to be gaining life every time we get a token, but uh, there they go. They finally got a land. Perfect. Uh, that is a super counterable spell. So let's go ahead and do that. Get that out of there. 
do not want to be worried about a Righteous Valkyrie in this kind of board state. Um, obviously not a creature we are easily going to be able to deal with, and so for everything we everything we can counter at this point, I think we probably just will. Uh, because again, we start to take over the board here by just not playing anything. Um, and that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, we're just going to quench that. Again, we don't even have to use the rewind. We certainly can when the time comes, but we really don't have to at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do that uh, just because I don't think we need to. I'd rather just have the hard counter. Um, we can steal the Soul Warden. That's kind of the fun part with the Archmage's Charm. But at this point, I mean, there's very little they are going to be able to do here. Uh, cool. Four mana is great. And unless they have a non counter, uh, an uncounterable sweeper of some kind that I don't know exists, I think we will be fine. Uh, so this is great. Bad start from the opponent, though, to be fair. Uh, I think this could have been a much more difficult matchup had we uh, not had such a. A rough start from the opponent. There we go. Easy, guys. That's exactly what we want to happen every time. Not the land side on the opponent. Obviously, we'd like a better game than that. That was just unfortunate. Uh, but the reality is, like, we are just trying to soft counter, soft counter, hard counter, play threat, keep counters up, and that's all we have to do. Uh, and so that was great. That was perfect. Let's jump into game number four. We are sitting at two and one right now. All right, guys, and here we are for our game number four. I think I said four. Uh, yeah, we can keep this. It's not a ideal. Uh, the Lonely Sandbars, this is kind of the downside to the Lonely Sandbars, right? That, uh, unfortunately, they do come into play tapped uh, if we have to play them on land side, which in this case, I think we do. I think that's just the right call. Uh, we don't have great counter magic at this point either, which kind of sucks, but... Um, I will go ahead and pay two here. This is obviously representing a counter, but more importantly at this point, if they decide to play something into a counter, we have the counter for it, or we could just grow spiral, get a free land drop, get, get a little bit further along, and then be able to leave up next turn that frilled mystic to counter whatever they might do. Uh, now, it looks like they are going to be an Azorius deck, so I'm not necessarily anticipating a lot. Uh, oh no. Oh no, what's happening? Okay, we're back. I don't know what that was, but we are back. Uh, please do not crap out. <laughs> if we do drop, guys, I will, of course, jump back in as soon as I can. I don't know what's happening. Hmm. All right, guys, give me a second. All right, uh, we are back. Unfortunately, that did not go through, uh, which kind of sucks, uh, because we definitely tried to counter that. But... We're back, uh, so we'll do the best we can. It looks like this is going to be the 9 lives deck, which is an annoying deck to play against without a doubt. Uh, let's play the Dream Root Cascade. This leaves up the Frilled Mystic, um, and we'll see what we need to do. The opponent really doesn't seem to have many lands, though, which is actually quite helpful. Um, so I am actually going to try for the Brazen Borrower play here. We could actually bounce this, and that's certainly worthwhile, but I think we actually want to take advantage of the fact that they just don't have very much right now. Um, I will also cycle this. Uh, I don't think we need the extra mana right now, but we've got plenty of other lands that can come down, uh, so that's great. All right, so first things first, we're just going to attack. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm not going to worry too much about it or stress too much about it. Just let it happen, and then there we go. I think we can save the uh, the breeding pool. I don't think we need it quite yet. Uh, and we do have that growth spiral as well, so we can actually get an extra land down if we need it. Okay. Um, yeah, I will go ahead and growth spiral here. I don't think there's a huge reason not to. They could very easily have something. Obviously, with four mana, there's quite a lot they could have, but... Um, this really sets us up to be able to not just Frilled Mystic, but then also play something else. Ooh, there we go. Uh, that's so good. Okay. Uh, let's definitely attack in. Again, holding that Jwari Disruption because of the fact that they have been stuck on mana. This is The, the Jwari Disruption really punishes any kind of deck that unfortunately has to uh, handle that. Um, I will go ahead and Frilled Mystic the Memory Deluge. Uh, they are just digging for lands, so I think, again, we just need to punish them if they just don't have them. 
uh, and Jwari Disruption should be able to manage anything else. I guess we could have just used Jwari Disruption there, but I like getting pressure down on the board at this point. Ah, uh, um... I think... Mm. Okay, so... We can Jwari Disruption. This really doesn't do anything, unfortunately, because uh, they can just pay for the one. We probably should have waited then. Definitely a bit of a mistake, I think, uh, but that's fine. Let's... Hmm. Let's do this. Uh, we'll send that to the bottom. Let's do this to bounce the Solemnity. Uh, and let's attack in. Uh, so they are going to get that, and we get to leave up the Archmage's Charm to counter the Solemnity on the way back down. Um, I think that's the, the solution here. Um, do we go for this now? Uh, man, so tricky. I think we do, but I'm not positive on this. If they just have a way to handle it, that's going to suck. But I think we send this out. Because um, now, again, we are just trying to pressure them as best we can. They are past Solemnity playability, right? So they can't actually throw it down. Unless they have an instant speed way to do it, which is just me not being familiar enough with Historic to know. Um, but it looks like they're going to march. Okay. That honestly is fine. Um... Not really overly concerned about that. Decisive Denial is very good in this scenario, actually. So, yes, I will happily take that. Let's go ahead and hit him. Uh, win nine lives. And there are nine or more. All right. So, we're at two. Uh, we got a long way to go. But we, again, have quite a bit of counter magic ready to go here. They are trying to get around. It looks like soft counters by, like, kind of sandbagging the Solemnity here. Uh, which makes sense. I will just definitely play a Brazen Borrower here. I'm not going to go for the Memory Deluge quite yet. Um, I think we, again, just kind of want to get as much down as we can to pressure this. Uh, land is good because we do want to be able to play multiple things in a turn. Let's attack in. Let's see what they got. Perfect. I am 100% just going to Decisive Denial this. Uh, I'm saving the hard counter. Um, for obvious reasons. Um, they are getting up there in mana, and so at this point, we basically just want to make sure they can't do anything. Um, Alright, they're up to four. Almost halfway there. Um, let's see if they go for the Solemnity this turn. They probably have more than one Solemnity, I would think, at this point. Um, but, we'll see. Maybe they don't. Um, do we go for it? Yeah, I think we do. If they have a counter, they have a counter. I, I, they're not going to play the Solemnity at this point, so, like, that's fine. Sure. And they can gain all the life they want. They've actually kind of made that perfectly fine uh, by, by playing nine lives at this point. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, so they are going to take it? Maybe not? I don't know. We'll see. This is honestly a very good game regardless of how this actually pans out because this has been really, really fun. Wow, they are taking a lot to do this. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look and see what we have here. Hmm. I think we take these two? Uh, Brazen Bar- Ah, Brazen Borrower might have been the play, honestly. Alright, I'm gonna counter here. Let's untap one, two, three, four. Uh, that gives us Frilled Mystic, uh, as an option, and then that will give us just enough to be able to kill them. So we basically have to hope they don't have another Solemnity, right? So we Frilled Mystic. Yes! We beat nine lives even after they had the combo on the field. That felt really good. Uh, man, 
What a game. That was a really, really good game. And we had a disruption in the middle of it. Oh, that was crazy. Um, guys, that was a great, great game. That puts us, I believe, at three and one. We'll do a quick check-in, uh, just so you guys know as well. Uh, in case, because I, I think I did forget to mention it, and again, the client being super weird. We may have to restart again, but uh, basically the idea is to get to seven wins before you get three losses. So I think we're at three and one. We'll jump back in, and we will check on it, and we will jump into the next game. All right, guys. So yes, we are at three and one, and this is a very reasonable keep. We will see what we can do here. Um, I can't believe we beat nine lives. That is such a such a crazy deck to try and beat. Um, okay. I am going to lead with just the blue source here. This leaves up Fading Hope just in case we need it. Next turn we can go Breeding Pool, shock ourselves if need be, and it's fine. Um, interesting. Um, I actually do think we're just going to bounce this. This is just a, a deck where we are going to want to slow down everything we can. I'm actually keeping the Frilled Mystic because uh, there's a very real chance we get to four mana next turn. Um, so yeah, this seems reasonably easy. Um, it, uh, this is going to be the Affinity deck, the Azorius Affinity deck. We have played this deck quite a bit, uh, and it's a great one. It's a really, really fun deck. So we'll see what the opponent ends up going for here. Um, Brazen Borrower, also quite good, because in this scenario, we, we can actually bounce the token that they can generate off of this. Uh, so if they want to go for it, great. It's perfectly fine. Um, they may have Metallic Rebukes. Those are things that we do need to consider. Um, but it looks like they don't, so we are just going to run for it. I actually really hope they just go for this, because that'd be kind of sick. Okay, they did not. Um, that's fine, so we just pass. We can actually steal there. <laughs> so what they can do with the Retrofitter Foundry, for the record, is sacrifice the Thopter, uh, which is really, really good, and generate a 4-4. Uh, in which case, we can actually just straight up steal this if we'd like. Uh, or just bounce it with Brazen Borrower, which right now is probably going to be the play. We could also just take it uh, and plant a Brazen Borrower on the upcoming turns just to be able to... Ah, this is a tricky one. I'm actually going to take the four. This feels weird, but the reason I'm doing this, they didn't equip this, which makes me think they are going to be playing more stuff this turn. Uh, and I think I would rather them go ahead and play a couple things and allow us to steal stuff next turn. I'm going to go ahead and try and counter this, actually. I'm assuming they have a Metallic Rebuke. Um, which, yeah, there it is. And that is why we wait. <laughs> um, that is fine. All right, six. So let's actually drop one of you. Um... And this is a fun place where we just get to bounce everything they have. Uh, and I do think this is the play because now they are down to two cards in hand. They can go up the retrofitter kind of line if they want. Uh, but that is going to be a bit slower. Uh, sure. Uh, do we, if we steal this, do we get the equipment too? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, this might be a complete bust, but I'm going to try it. Uh, it's going to be a 1-1 one -one if we do get it, so it's not really all that helpful, but I'm kind of curious. Kind of just want to know. Oh no, it, it doesn't... Is it just on the field? No. Huh. That's weird, but sure, I, I'll take it. <laughs> Great. Uh, excellent, excellent. Let's drop a Brazen Borrower, and let's try and push through as much as we can. They might just have a Metallic Rebuke here, and again, that's fine. That's really not a big deal, uh, because they are burnt out, uh, which is awesome. Um, swag, let's, let's attack for five. We got a four-turn clock. Let's see if they can fight it. Yeah, seems okay. Um, granted, yeah, they are going to start to throw out these little, these little guys, but... Every one that they push out there, we actually get more for it, so that's kind of fun. Uh, now this is going to suck because there's not a lot we can do about it. Um, I mean, we could try and draw it. Obviously, they've got the mana, right? So that's not a problem. Uh, so... 
Um, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we can't do anything. They get the nettle cyst back, which sucks. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do this just so they can't play anything that they get off of it. Um, this also takes out of the equation any metallic rebukes, and then we can just go ahead and brazen borrower. I think we lose this game, honestly, guys. But you know what? This has been a really fun game. We learned uh, a little bit. That's part of our, our goal is to learn a little bit, and we did. So I am fine with that. Um, all right, so let's actually attack in. If they want to block, phenomenal. Um, let's go ahead and draw two cards. I'm doing this now, by the way, because, ugh, that sucks. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, sure. Um, play this. Yeah, fine. Good. Uh, this is not good game yet. Uh, it probably will be, but it's not good game yet. They can equip up, uh, which is fine. We just get to bounce this, so, like, doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, you did it. Uh, so we wait for them to attack. We do this. Goodbye, Smith. They can't even replay it this turn, can they? That's pretty solid. Uh, so we take one. Yeah. Um, actually, pretty solid. Let's <laughs> let's see what we hit. There's really no reason uh, to worry too much about playing it. You know, instant speed at this point. I think we just go for it. Um, I don't think there's much we can do. I'll be honest. <laughs> They've got two nettle cysts at this point, so, like, they have the damage output, right? Like, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. This has been a very fun game, though. Uh, no matter what happens, this has been a very fun game. All right, again, we wait until they attack, uh, because then they will be at the very least amount of damage possible. We bounce it. They can sacrifice it in response uh, to... Oh, they didn't. That might have just been a mistake. They should have sacrificed it to the Foundry uh, to get a 4-4. So that would have dealt one more damage, and they would have had another creature on the board, which is obviously better than what they have now. Not that it matters. I think they have got us. I'm surprised, though, that we have stayed in the game this long. Uh, so that's cool. All right. Uh, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to fight off a little ingenious smith and be done i think uh yes i will pay for you yeah i mean we're we're dead <laughs> there's nothing we can do about this um i'm gonna go ahead and concede and they had a metallic rebuke yeah you know what that was a really fun game though guys i'll be honest azorius artifacts is one of my favorite or azorius affinity is one of my favorite historic decks that's why i played it first a couple weeks ago uh such a blast of a deck to play and it's very very good i mean it's pretty easy to win in the first few turns with that deck i'm just happy that we survived for a little while honestly and i think simic flash has the tools to do it so that's pretty good uh that does put us i believe at three and two uh, so still a winning record. We'll see if we can get another win after this, guys. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are for our next game. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I guess we keep. It's a little tricky, but uh, I think we can do it. Um, we can put a breeding pool down tapped and then next turn have another breeding pool which will give us either Jwari Disruption, Decisive Denial, or Grow Spiral. So this seems perfectly reasonable. We also have the Archmage's Charm to be able to draw, like, I feel like we've got basically all the tools we need. We'll see. Uh, guys, I do want to encourage you, if you are... Wow, excuse me, just burped a little bit. If you are uh, enjoying these gameplay videos, the podcast, all the all the stuff that It Resolves is doing right now, the live streams, please make sure to leave likes on everything that you are enjoying. Even if you don't enjoy it, give us a thumbs down. Let us know. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. We just want to know what you guys are enjoying and what you aren't enjoying. So that way we can continue pushing in that direction. I know All Will Be One is going to be out quite soon. I know myself and John both were very excited about it, and we've got a lot of things planned for it. Uh, and so I do encourage everybody to stick around for that, because it's going to be a blast. 
Uh, the set looks great. Um, I, I think it's going to be an awesome time. One thing I did want to kind of uh, speak to very quickly as we're getting into this uh, this fifth, sixth game? Sixth game. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I initially stated at the uh, or at the beginning of the podcast uh, season two, The Glorious Sunrise, uh, the first episode there, I did mention that I wanted to do some more updates on, you know, spoilers, things like that that are going on for All Will Be One. Uh, the reason I haven't is pretty, pretty, uh, basically the whole, like, most of the set got spoiled, uh, like, way earlier than it was supposed to, thanks to the leaks, and so... I just decided, you know what, it's all out there at this point. I don't want to put a video out on leaks, uh, because I don't think that's necessarily a fair thing to do. I think also you get yourself into trouble by doing that, and so I figured let's not do it. But by the time a lot of these cards were officially spoiled, most everybody knew about them. Uh, and so it felt like doing a video on it probably wasn't the best idea. Uh, now that was just my opinion, I'm sure a lot of other people have different you know different opinions there i don't know if that was the right call uh i don't want them to have that so i think it's fine um but we'll see i'm actually gonna play the sandbar and pass um so all that to say we did not do any we did the first look when those were spoiled but that was all we did uh and so unfortunately that is that is just how it's gonna go we're probably not gonna get to uh do anything else um okay yeah so this is the Dragonstorm deck. They did not hit another land, which is quite good. Um, but this is going to be a bit of a tricky one, no doubt about it. Let's pass. Uh, it might just be a, one of these where we just try and bash through with Ambusher as quickly as we can. Um, they may just get unlucky with this, though. Uh, they do have the Scholar. We have to remember, so on video actually, very recently, we countered the wrong thing or bounced the wrong thing. We need to make sure we do the right one. Uh, which we may not even be able to do, but we do have Ottawara, I guess, so we should be able to. Uh, looks like the opponent is just kinda a little upset. They're playing slow. Maybe they're just thinking through it, which is perfectly fine, um, but you know, this is a fairly straightforward deck in what they're trying to do, so I would have expected this to be a pretty reasonable one. Uh, do I Decisive Denial this? Or just Frilled Mystic? Um, I kind of want to, because it does not seem like they've got a lot. Um, this might be too aggressive. I'll be honest, this might be very, very aggressive. Okay, they did not have a land. Uh, I feel bad for them, but... That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to play Ottawara. We do have the Brazen Borrower to disrupt the combo, but I think having multiple access to that and just being able to, to Night Pack Ambusher this turn should be enough. <laughs> I mean, I think we do it. Um, I think we just keep them off everything. They're not doing anything like reasonably helpful. Um, and I think, again, we just pass like... Now we can Night Pack Ambusher plus Brazen Borrower. Uh, so this feels pretty good. They did find a land, uh, which is good. Uh, do I care about this? So I can do that. I don't actually think I care about that. I think Night, like, at this point, it's kind of done its thing, and now we just get this down. So, attack for four and pass get a get a little three three for basically doing nothing um and now like again they have to spend most of their time figuring out what they're gonna do here we actually can threaten lethal next turn as well uh no 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 excuse me yeah we can we can just throw brazen borrower out um so we can brazen borrower plus archmage's tar charm excuse me uh and so i do think this is going to be the turn where we just try and push for max damage if they have another Deafening Clarion or something along those lines, a land and a Wrath of God, we just Archmage's Charm, play Brazen Borrower, attack for the win. Pretty straightforward. Again, a very unlucky hit from the opponent. I think they just haven't they just haven't drawn lands. Uh, they've got three. We have got a lot more than three. <laughs> uh, so kind of just unfortunate, but it is what it is. Give me a Wrath of God, please. Make this easy. 
They could Mizzix Mastery if they've got it, which I'm sure they do. Excellent, we just get to counter it. That's not gonna happen. Uh, Brazen Borrower, and we win. Never didn't have it, that's not true. That was a little sketchy. This is a sketchy deck to play against, but guys, we did it. We did it, that was awesome. Uh, we are at four and two? I think that is correct. Let's look, I think we're at four and two. Uh, which does mean the next, I mean, technically that game was a really important game because we could have just lost, but I mean, we're doing okay with this Simic Surprise. Let's keep it going. Let's see if we can get another win. Otherwise, we are out. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, and here we are for our next game. Um, yeah, I will keep this. Um, I'm actually going to lead with the sandbar. <laughs> um, as silly as that may seem, uh, I, th I think this is actually where we're going to lead. Um, the reason being, no matter what we do, this is going to come into play tapped. We could save it to cycle it. I don't think that's what we want to do. Um, and so now we can just throw this down and either quench or brazen borrower. Excuse me. Uh, we can Brazen Borrower the Cold Steel Heart if we'd like. Alright. Really? Um, okay. I'm not really sure. Uh, it looks like this is just gonna be the ramp style deck, which is gonna be annoying. Do I just disrupt him, or do I wait? I think I wait. That might be 100% incorrect. I have no idea. Um, we're gonna enter that tapped because we're not gonna be doing anything with it. Uh, yeah, well, let's see what happens. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. There you are. Uh, yeah. That's fine. I assume they're gonna make us discard. Uh, let's resolve that, I suppose, first. I don't think we're gonna want Quench given they've got a crap load of mana, right? Seems kind of silly. Um, I guess I'll Brazen Borrower the, the Lily. Oh, these have the Transformer sleeves. I just noticed that, that's kind of fun. Okay. Uh, that's fine, actually. All right. I think we just pass. Uh, I hope they play something before they activate Lily, but chances are they won't. Uh, so we're just gonna end up discarding. Sure. I'm just gonna discard Jwari Disruption. Um, I think Memory Deluge is too good to, you know, refill the hand, and so not really interested in letting that happen. I'm assuming they have a counter spell. Let's uh, let's play Brazen Borrower. Let's play it out as a creature and see what they do. Fully believe they are just going to counter this. Yep. Perfect. That's fine. I say perfect. It's really not perfect. It kind of sucks. But, <laughs> uh, sure. All right. So, I'm. yeah, they're going to go the right, the correct route here. Um, I'm going to throw a memory deluge down. They discarded a watery grave. That's fine. All right, let's go memory deluge now. I'm assuming they might have a counter. No, they don't. Take that in a land. I think that's fine. Okay, quench is fine-ish. Uh, this kind of sucks. Um, I mean, I think we just pass. Just for the ability to rewind plus something is pretty good. The... They are gonna hit us with this. Um, let's draw two. This really doesn't feel that good. I'll be honest. Feels kinda, kinda not great. Um, I mean, basically, we're going to keep three lands, and they're probably going to be our tapped lands, and that's fine. Wait, 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 wait. I definitely chose the wrong one. All right, that's fine. There's the shieldred. That's terrifying and whatnot. Uh, let's draw. Uh, 
Uh, so here's the trick. We actually want to bounce at the end of their turn um, to be able to keep this going and counter it on the way back down. So we actually do kind of have to take a hit here. Uh, yeah, I definitely kept the wrong pile. I was supposed to keep the one with more lands. <laughs> um, all right, let's bounce Shieldred now. I think we lose this. Like, we just haven't drawn anything that we need to be able to deal with what they've got. They've also just been able to counter, uh, like, everything. They've had a lot of counters. Um... They're gonna Inquisition us? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that sucks, but like, it's kind of okay. Uh, I think they take Quench, maybe? Nah, Quench isn't that good. Brazen Barber, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, well, <laughs> there's nothing we can do. Uh, we basically have to hope they don't hit a land, I think. Because if they hit a land, uh, no, it doesn't even matter. Quench is only two, and they've got enough to, to do it, so that really doesn't matter. Oh, it's an Oracle deck. Ugh, yeah. That sucks. Uh, sure. This gives them the power nine <laughs> in their deck, which is ridiculous. All right, let's see what they get. I think this is our loss, guys. I think this is our loss, but you know what? still been a fun game uh, despite really losing uh, <laughs> we are gonna go ahead and play the brazen borrower because there's not really a reason not to they're gonna hit us with one of these that's fine I don't particularly care about that um, it's a little annoying because we kind of just want every land we can get um, but ooh, there we go all right we do have basics for just such an occasion. All right, uh, land I will take. And I will actually attack the Narset here. I'm assuming they block, yeah, that's fine. All right, so land is really good because it gives us rewind, uh, which will allow us to counter one of the big spells that I assume they will play this turn and then play Night Pack Ambusher. So I think land was literally our best draw. Um, now they can just do nothing and that works too. Um, so I think we have to be patient. So we can run Night Pack out there, but that's not gonna help us at all. All right, so we just have to pass. Ugh, this is so tricky. <laughs> Any opponent that also has counters is just going to be frustrating, so. Alright, do we run out the Ambusher knowing that they're going to counter it? Yeah, I think we do at this point. We have to do something. Uh, so, they're going to Archmage's Charm. This does keep them from drawing cards. Uh, oh, they let that happen. Do they have a removal spell? That's weird. Um, but, sure. I'm gonna attack them. I'm not gonna attack Narset. We're not trying to draw very many cards here. Uh, this also doesn't draw cards, for the record. It technically just puts them into your hand, so we could still Memory Deluge. This is kind of crazy that we're still in this game at all. So we are gonna rewind, hoping they don't have a counter. Or, uh, uh, well, I guess they have Archmage's Charm. Um, yeah, so they are gonna be able to counter this. Oh, what a tricky time. What a tricky time. Make disappear. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we draw. Not a lot we can do there. So we can fight. That doesn't seem good, right? So we get another wolf. Nope, nope, don't auto-pass. Not a good time to auto-pass. All right. This is a really interesting matchup. I mean, I still think we lose. Like, the Shieldred is too good for us to not, you know what I mean? So do we go for the Rewind, or... So we can Quench, they pay two, then Quench again, they pay two. 
All right, so I'm gonna quench first. And then we have decisive denial. This might be stupid. But I feel like we just gotta do a play. Like, they, them getting another Narset down represents more answers in their hand. And so at this point, like, we don't wanna give them that. Um, so I'm just gonna decisive denial. Kind of a, a crappy way to do it, but. Yep. Um, I don't even know if this is correct, but let's get that out of there. All right, we are down to the last couple turns here, I think, because in four we die. <laughs> There's not really a lot we can do about that. Another ambusher. I think we just attack with the three. I assume they just block one? Or don't? That seems weird. They can do that, and then we can Archmage's Charm. <sighs> or Quench, excuse me, the Archmage's Charm. This is such a tricksy game, man. I can't believe they went for the draw two. That's interesting. Uh, I guess that makes some sense, but... So now we have Night Pack Ambusher again. Man, what a game. What a game. So the reason we did that, by the way, we obviously don't want them to draw more cards, but B, um, if they go for the Memory Deluge this turn, they really don't have much else going for them because that is gonna take up like all of their mana. Uh, so this is actually fine. Um, and then our game plan is basically play Night Pack Ambusher and attack with everything and basically hope we can kill him. Um, if we do, I am just going to say it now, I will be amazed. If we win this game, I will be absolutely flabbergasted. Um, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Why did it have to be time walk? Okay, uh, that's really terrible. Um, we do actually, I'm gonna do this, uh, because it does mean that they're not gonna gain a lot of life. I think that was the right call. Oh, ah, that was cool. Uh, so they did draw Seagate Restoration. Yes! Oh my gosh! After an ulted Liliana of the Veil, Shieldred down twice, we were able to win. I can't believe that was such a good, with the Seagate restoration, I'm so glad that we blocked the Shieldred. We would have been out. Guys, that was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Oh, I'm so stoked. I believe that puts us at five and two. Is that correct? Is that correct? We are at five and two. Guys, we're doing great. Excuse me, let's jump into our next game, guys. Let's see if we can get another win. This is incredible. All right, guys, here we are for our next game. I still cannot, uh, I, I, I'm just amazed. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, let's actually run this out first uh, and see what we can do. I am very happy uh, so far with the way this has gone. Um, even though we are at two losses, we could certainly lose this game and just be out of it. That's kind of okay. We have had a killer run with a deck that, again, is not a tier one deck. This is not the kind of deck that you expect to do exceptionally well. Now, I'm not saying it's not a good deck, but I just don't think it's the kind of deck that you expect to really, really run out there and, you know, get tons and tons of wins or anything like that. So I am very excited about this. Uh, we, I, by the way, I bounced this because again, we are just trying to tempo them. Uh, we want to slow them down a little bit here. Uh, that smoldering egg is certainly a long-term threat that we don't want to be dealing with. Uh, and so this really kind of helps us out a little bit. Um, I'll throw the Brazen Borrower out. I assume they have a, a, a spell to kill it. Looks like maybe they don't. That's great. Um, and Rewind is absolutely amazing. Uh, so we can Rewind 
and then either Frilled Mystic or Nightback Ambusher, depending on what they do. Uh, so this will be great. Looks like they're going to try and kill this first. I will rewind a Bone Crusher uh, solely because this also gets rid of the threat of the Bone Crusher later on. Uh, if they've got another spell, now is the time to use it because we don't. There is that little in-between step where we just don't have a uh, an option for untapping our lands, but we do now, uh, which is great. We pass and throw down a Night Pack Ambusher. So now we should be able to start really getting somewhere. Um, I'm just gonna throw this out tapped, be done, and attack for four. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see what they've got. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot they could have here, so we'll see what they've got. But I'm feeling reasonably okay. I mean, this isn't a wonderful position, but it's not bad. There we go. Uh, we honestly could have just frilled Mystic, and that probably would have been better there, actually. Bit of a mistake on my end. Uh, let's go ahead and cycle this, then, because we know they just don't have anything. Cool. Even better. Uh, all right. We pass. This is where Night Pack Ambusher, man. It's just so freaking good. Like, it's amazing. Uh, do we counter this? We do, right? Like, I think we do. This might be incorrect. I don't know, but I'm gonna. Um, and we'll see what they've got. They can kill a wolf. That's fine. Yeah, I think, I think maybe they just don't have very much at this point. So yeah, we'll take that action and we win. <laughs> Guys, all right, look. I understated this deck, that's all I'm saying. This has been so ridiculously fun. Uh, I believe the next game will be our last, no matter what, right? We're at six and two? I believe that's correct. Yeah, guys, we are at six and two. The next one, we're either gonna take the seven wins or we are gonna take the three losses. Let's do it. All right, everybody, here we are. This is the last game, no matter what we do. Let's try and keep this one. We will see what we can do. Uh, this, I, I highly recommend if you don't normally play this kind of deck, just kind of as we close up with this last game here, uh, I do recommend uh, giving it a shot. I know it's a bit of an odd deck in the sense that it's it's got really good solid threats, but they're all instant speed, uh, which maybe feels weird to some, but I'm telling you, this deck is really, really fun. Uh, and I highly encourage everybody to give it a shot. It's such a blast to play. Uh, it also does kind of force you into the like play pass kind of mentality, which isn't necessarily the easiest thing to get in, in touch with if you are not normally that kind of player. So uh, I will just kind of throw that out as a bit of a warning that you do have to kind of be careful about those plays and really kind of think through everything. Um, so far, we've been fairly fortunate in the, the way these games have gone. Uh, and so it's not been crazy difficult, but uh, this is great, actually. <laughs> just gonna bounce it. Uh, I guess technically we could have waited, but that seems fine. Yeah. Um, and next turn we have Rewind plus Memory Deluge, so like, pretty solid. Um, yeah, just pass. Uh, Decisive Denial, also really good ag against this deck. We've been against this deck. I think this is our third time now. We Our first two games were, were this way, so. Uh, let's, let's do the counter on Reckless Charge. Awesome. Uh, yeah, pretty easy. Um... I'm gonna try this. I'm not anticipating this works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, but I will actually try and flash this out and then if they wanna kill it, they can kill it. Uh, the reason I kinda want this is because it's just, regardless of what they do, it's gonna be getting a spell out of their hand, which in this case is like really important. Um, and uh, if it did work, it just meant they had no threats on the field. So that seems pretty good. That I 100% counter. No reason not to. Um, all right. Hmm. 
Hmm. I actually don't think we countered this. Uh, I do. I don't want them to draw cards. So like, there's a pretty significant decision in making that uh, or encountering that. I think what I'd rather do is night pack ambusher and then be able to fight this off. So that long term just takes the threat off the battlefield, which is like way more important. Cool. So I'm gonna drop the night pack ambusher. Great. All right. Um, we attack. No reason not to. Um, just gonna pass. And now we don't even have to fight with the ambusher if we don't want to risk it. <laughs> uh, yeah. If they've got an instant speed spell, we actually just have answers, so, like, that's fine. <laughs> this is great. Just gonna bounce one. Um, no, nah, I don't think we need a land. And then before this gets out of hand, I'm gonna go ahead and fight the other one. So this is before that trigger happens. Now they can obviously do something about this if they want. Um, and yeah, they're gonna deal the three. That's fine. That's like really annoying, but again, that damage just isn't coming to us now. And they also don't have any spells in hand anymore. Uh, so as annoying as this is, they scribe to the bottom as well. Uh, if we can get really, really good draws off of maybe a memory deluge or something, we should be in great shape. There's no reason not to attack here. Obviously we can't block. So we, we do have to get a little lucky, right? Like, if they just draw a spell, we could just lose. In fact, we do just lose. Yep. Um, that'll do it. Man, so close, though. So close to a perfect run. Let's just see what we would hit off of uh, Memory Deluge. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. You know what? Fine. Uh, that came full circle. That was a really really fun couple of games um as they're finishing us off here i just want to say again try different decks guys try different decks i know you know it sometimes is a little expensive to try different decks sometimes it's really difficult because it's not your normal play pattern this is the kind of deck that is so fun to play just because it forces you out of it it's sort of like death shadow uh where you're playing a deck that just has no business being as good as it is and so uh this feels really really fun i'm not guaranteeing that you'll get great results but i do think it's a really fun deck to try and again it forces you into a position where you're playing a little bit differently than what you're used to and that's something worth valuing that's something worth exploring because truthfully you're gonna be against a deck like this at some point in your in your magic exploits whatever you want to call it and so i encourage you learn how to play it because if you learn how to play it you will learn how to better deal with it in the future so with that being said guys thank you so much for watching what was a wonderful event this was an absolute blast i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you guys again for watching the podcast as well making sure that you are liking commenting on the videos and of course subscribing for that 10,000 subscriber giveaway we encourage you to do that but guys thank you so much i love you all very much i'll hopefully see you tomorrow i'll talk to you guys then